the, the interesting thing I find with, uh, uh, with Blues Fest is you, the ability to put together such an amazing lineup year in, year out. It, it, it never takes a step back, it always goes forward. How do you do that? Is that well, just relationships built? Well, all that, but um, it's sure, like, yeah, people go, how many times do you jump on a plane? Well, I haven't been on a plane in America or the UK this year, and I'll be announcing next, next Thursday. Yeah. I spend more time in Bali than anywhere else. Well, I'm, hey, that's not a bad place to hang out, you know. Well, I just find you get your head clear. You know, it's like Chuggy goes and does it in Phuket. He's flying up to Hawaii today because, um, you know, if you can get alone, you can really do a lot. Yeah. It's when you're a lot of people around and, you know, everybody wants something. And, and there's nothing wrong with that, but, you know, to really focus on something, you've got to get alone and do it, I find, anyway. I go out to my place in Bali and just book a festival, you know? Yeah. Listen to the Gamelan all day long. I yeah. love it. Um, and I, I think, you know, basically, because I, I don't know any other festival director in Australia that was a professional musician, you know, for a long time, like I was for over a decade. Um, and I guess that comes into it too, you know? Like, and I just hear music in two ways. It's good or it's bad. I, I don't care whether it's country music or... I have a little bit of a problem with music are not made by human beings, you know, like you get into electronica t too much and I find it's, it loses that humanity, that human element. But um, that's just me. I mean, other people like it. I'm not, that's fine. But um, so, I, yeah, so I guess the, the real answer is I, I think that I had to learn the business side of the business, you know, I had the music side. Yeah. And um, I think to some degree that gives me an edge. And, and I, and, and musicians don't, men, most musicians. Yeah. Can we do that again? No, yeah, continue, that's all right. Most musicians don't hear in genres. I mean, some guys play bluegrass, some guys play blues, but I can't tell you how many blues musicians I go on the road with, and they're playing country music. Yeah. You know, because they just hear in terms of good and bad, you know? And they go, oh, this just blew me away, you know? And yeah. it could be from anywhere, you know? And you go like, man, I just thought you play music from Mississippi or somewhere where you come from, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, um, and I guess that's where I am with music, you know, like, like Blues Fest will always have blues on it, it will always have roots music, but it, you know, it could go into, you know, we've had bands like Segura Ross play, yeah, yeah. first time I think they played in festivals, or, or Bright Eyes, you know, or uh, all sorts of stuff. I mean, someone's rumouring at the moment that I got Iggy and the Stooges Farewell Tour being announced next week. I mean, <laughs> Uh, I'm not announcing anything today, but, uh, you know, uh, I think stuff like that's exciting, you know, and that's what, that's what we try and do, like just something that challenges people musically, and, and um, I remember like Steve Earle yesterday was saying, look, I've played to lots of great audiences, but I've only ever played to two incredible audiences in my life. Yeah. One was in Italy, and one was at Blues Fest this year, and... He said, that audience was so with me, I levitated. Yeah. I'm, I'm much less afraid in booking it now to sort of take bigger risks. Yeah. I guess when you're a newer festival, you, you know, you're much, you're very dependent, of course, on breaking even and paying the bills. And, and, and most years we, we make a good profit. And uh, so I, I guess rather than that me going, I've found a formula, I'm actually going, it's given me the freedom to even do more out there things, mm -hmm. you know, or maybe put on some really avant-garde jazz or, or because Australia is missing so much, you know, uh, not a whole rap, but um, I don't find that, I mean, 10 or 20 years ago, what we were doing was looked at as being very left of center. Mm -hmm. Now, it really has come much more into the mainstream with acts like John Butler and people like that, Australian based artists and Cat Empire, but still, you know, what I do is not what you'd like to do hear on your radio every day. Yeah. Even though I have a festival with over 100,000 people attend. Yeah. Um, I, I think that what, and, 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 I, and I notice that all of a sudden Roots Music artists are keynote speakers at Big Sound. Yeah. You know, and I just keep saying, we're making the ground and we're going to keep making it because we're the real guys. We're not, we're not One Erection or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, we're the guys that make the music and and I love to be presenting those sort of people, people that challenge you, people that, you know, have got a world viewpoint that even if you don't agree with it, I mean, when 
when Steve wrote that John Walker Lynn blues, you know, the guy that was picked up in a jail in Afghanistan, and they go, he's an American? Yeah. And they couldn't wait to put him behind bars and let him, you know, rot. Nobody ever hears about him anymore, but Steve wrote that song about, hang on a minute, why would an American do that? Yeah, absolutely. It's a pretty interesting, you know, viewpoint yeah. um, to take, and they're the sort of guys I like to put on. I, there are guys who come from Cuba. I go to Cuba and I get bands, and uh, it's not necessarily the commercial part of the festival. I mean, Ben Harper's the commercial part, you know, uh, the Pogues or someone like that, but, uh, you know, Jack Johnson and people like that. But, uh, yeah, I, I just think that people, if, uh, if you really give them an opportunity to hear great music, they respond to it. Yeah. And I guess one of the promoters back in the 60s and 70s that I, just really influenced me was, you know, you'd see this guy, Bill Graham, in, in, and he was one of the great promoters, even though here he wasn't easy to get along with, I never knew the man. But um, he put on, you know, the big act of the day, say, Big Brother in the Holding Company or Grateful Dead or someone, and he put Albert King on to open the show. Yeah. You know, he had that thing of like, you know, putting great artists on, even though they might not be great artists known to that audience, but that audience was coming to see someone else, and they walked out knowing about something else that they might never have known about. Yeah. That's, but it's not true altruism either because I, I do need to make a dollar to do this. Yeah, you've got to be honest about it. You've got to be honest about it. Well, Peter, thank you very much for your time. I think we'll leave it there. I know you've got a million and one things to do, but uh, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you and uh, Blues Fest 2013. And only I will know how hard it was to make this interview. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But I heard, uh, I heard that band last night, Grey Ghost, yeah. yeah. And that was late, but gee, it was worth waiting out. Yeah, well, that's a good one. We both had a late night last night, man, <laughs> so let's go recover. Thank you very much. Pleasure.